How many bars do I have left? Two? Ugh, let's do this before the battery runs out. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another video and bringing those smiling faces. Love to see them. So I'm gonna do this video a little bit different than some of my other guide videos, just because when I have a client on the boat, I'm not in the video making mindset. I'm there to get those guys on fish. That's that's my number one priority. So like the, the creative side of my brain kind of shuts down, but we're gonna make up for it. So in this video, obviously by the title, I got a snakehead charter and my angler, believe it, you guys will never guess where he's from. He actually is from Manhattan and he does all of his fishing in Central Park. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I mean, if you guys didn't know that, Central Park has got a ton of bass, a lot of carp, they have smallmouth bass in there. It's actually a really cool fishery. The fish may not get as big as what we have here in Florida, but it's still, I can only imagine those huge, huge skyscrapers just all around you in the park, catching bass. It has to be such a fun time. But, so my angler Kai, he seems really cool and a great guy. So he flew down and we were off on the boat. So when we started first thing in the morning, I had him throwing a topwater frog. I think we had on like a Tekel honker. I wanted to get Kai dialed to make sure that he knew how to cast, how far, the retrieve, etc., just to get him going so he can have the best chance of success. And when fishing for snakeheads in canals, you parallel the bank and just make these long casts right next to the bank, only a few feet from the shore, and just start retrieving it back to the boat. And I was up there on the bow with him, just making sure he's getting his cast dialed in and just kind of looking for those followers that may have been following the frog that he might not have seen. But we ended up fishing for a little while and didn't see anything. But as we were going underneath some bridges, we saw a few peacocks. So of course, you got to stop and try and catch some of these peacocks under the bridges. But unfortunately, there were no takers on this particular morning. Even though this was a full day trip, Kai was fishing for about two hours and didn't get a single bite. So I had to figure out something. And you know, guys, I'll admit, I broke rule number one. I picked up a rod and started fishing with him, but I had no choice. I had to do something to try and locate fish, see what maybe he was doing different that just wasn't lining up with what these fish wanted to eat on that particular day. So he was still throwing the topwater frog. He really wanted one on topwater. I don't blame him. It's the best way to catch snakeheads. So I picked up a rod and tied on a spinner bait and within like two casts, I caught a giant. This is not a small fish. Can we get the net? Yes. Oh my God. I felt super bad because that was a big fish. Yeah. It should have been Kai's, but like it turns out it, the it fish were just not looking up to, like, for that topwater eat. They were, they were really keying in on a subsurface bite. I'm not really sure if it was the high pressure, it was bluebird skies or what, but needless to say, I caught that big fish. I felt so bad. Kai was stoked for me. He just wanted to see a snakehead. We've never seen one in person before. So I didn't really film a lot of it because I just, I felt terrible. So I released it and on we kept fishing, but you can bet he picked up the spinnerbait. We kept moving down the canal and I was seeing some fry balls. I even netted some and you know, these are good signs. These fish are spawning. They're protecting the fry balls. They've got to be swimming around, you know, it can't be as slow as how it started in the morning. And sure enough, a few casts later, Kai finally got hooked up on the spinnerbait to his first snakehead. So it was in that transition where they're looking to nest. So they're not feeding, they're not like hunting and ambushing. They're just like trying to pick a spot. Yeah, real dude. I'm gonna put the motor on high. Oh my God. Keep pressure. Oh. To the left, 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 left. Oh, left. Oh, open up your oh. thing. All right. Oh, yes. We got Whoa. one. I told you we'd get oh one. Oh, my God. Dude, this is not even big, and he kicked Whoa. your ass. All right, we've got Kai from New York on the Flowcraft. We got his first snakehead. He got hooked up to another big one, but just unfortunately it came off. But This was awesome. This is awesome. How do you fight? What do you think, man? 
It's amazing, right? Nothing, nothing like the bass from New York. Yeah. Yeah, guys, you've heard me say it a million times. These fish, they fight so hard. I absolutely love snakehead trips. I don't get enough snakehead charters, but I'm glad when I get them because they are a blast. Today's been a little slow. Kind of have to grind it out a little bit, but now the fish are starting to wake up. So I don't know. We'll see. We've got some storms coming in, so hopefully it doesn't kick us off the water. But we're going to give this fish a release and keep on going. After the release, we looked at the spinnerbait and the thing was completely mangled. So that fish was caught on a war eagle spinnerbait. It's a little bent, I think. In light of that discovery, we tied on a new lure. Kai had actually brought a bunch from New York that he wanted to try. So he actually brought a Teckle Blade Walker, which is this modified version of a bladed jig. And if they were eating the swim bait, they were definitely gonna eat that thing. So I was cool with it, tied it on. It looked like it was super strong and we kept moving down the canal. Now the snakeheads were definitely reacting well to that bladed jig and he was getting a few bites but for some reason they just weren't staying pinned. I don't know what it was about that thing. I mean there was a little bit of a weed guard but I didn't think that was going to really hinder the fish from actually clamping down and getting a good hook set. I mean it, it's a great looking bait. I actually ordered a couple to try myself just to see what was going on. Back off on the drag a little bit. This is a snake head. A little more, a little more. Yeah, like that's good. This is a good one. Yeah. Oh, oh, he came up. No, dude. Oh, that's okay. As the day progressed, his technique was getting better and his hook sets were getting better. So they're really, it, I can't see any fault from Kai's position whatsoever. As we kept moving down the canal, we actually came across a really nice peacock that was, it didn't look like it was really guarding a nest. I didn't really see a rock. I didn't see any eggs or anything like that. It was kind of just posted up. It looked like it was picking a spot to spawn. And of course you cannot pass up a big peacock bass. Just, it's impossible. You have to go catch it. You know, the targeted species was snakeheads, but we needed to fish in the boat just to get that morale boost for me and as well for Kai. So I had him pick up a little peahawk and rest is history. Oh, come on fish. Nope. Oh, you got two. You got him. Oh, oh God. <laughs> you got him. Stay tight, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Bring this to the front of the boat. Fair enough. All right, now swing up to the net. Oh yeah! Wow! Oh, that was a good job. You got him, dude. Barely has anything. That's a nice size peacock. It's a big one, dude. He looked small, way smaller. Than that. <laughs> yeah. All right, second species of the day. Really nice peacock. Andrew's doing, or not Andrew? Excuse me. <laughs> it's Kai. He's doing an excellent job. And um, I don't know what else to say, man. Great job. Crushing it. Thank you. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. The peacock ended up being about four pounds and it was a really nice fish, great morale boost. So we released that fish, kept going down the canal and yeah. Kai kept getting bites on that blade walker, but they were coming oh, unpinned oh, right at the God. boat. I mean, he would get a good hook Ooh. set. He even had a really good follow as well, right by this big pipe. And I thought for sure that fish was gonna just charge and eat it, but it just got too close to the boat and spooked off. So we made a U-turn, oh buzzed it back down to one of my favorite stretches of canal. And after another miss on that blade walker, I made him cut that thing off and tie it on the spinner bait. Okay, spinner bait time. He got bit real quick and <laughs> disaster struck. see this what in the world just happened 
So the wire had actually pulled out of the weight on that war eagle and oh my gosh it, it was a brand new spinner bait too it was actually kai's spinner bait believe it or not it wasn't mine he brought the smaller version and it got smoked for about two seconds and then it gave up i had a few more war eagles in the boat so i was a little reluctant to tie another one on seeing what had just happened but they were really on that spinner bait bite and it just they, they were hooked and staying pinned so I made him tie it on and Kai made the best cast of his life up to this point. It landed right on top of this snakehead's head and the bite was insane. Holy cow. You got him? Catch up to him, catch up to him. Just bring him this way, just bring him this way. Got him, dude. Oh, oh my gosh. Whew, that was a sick eat. Wow. Oh, that was, I know. We, I, we oh both Oh my made. god. Wow. It's like, yeah, I saw him. Oh my I think it like landed you right on top him. of him, right? You spooked him, but he was like, oh no, I'm eating. <laughs> wow. Holy crap. MVP Kai over here just crushed it. That was one of the craziest eats. He spooked that fish with the spinner bait and he kept fishing it. Cause that, and he, he just, Kai just knew that fish was looking for it. And uh, that was textbook. You just let that fish find it and eat and he, <laughs> he set the hook like a champ. Love it. These fish are, for a brown fish, they're really gorgeous. So we'll give this thing a nice release. Awesome job. Thank you. We had fished all day. It was an eight hour trip, and I think we had fished for seven hours for that bite. And man, I'm, I was so happy that it closed on such an epic, epic bite. We did fish for another hour. I let the trip run a little long because I wanted to get one more, but man, those fish, they just, they kind of shut down after that. So whew, it was still a really good trip. Uh, Kai, had learned a lot. These are some of my favorite trips because I get to teach someone and he was a much better caster, a much better hook setter, and just an overall better angler when he left the trip than when he first started it. And that's just, that's so rewarding to me. I mean, he leveled up like you wouldn't believe. He was getting some monster hook sets in on some of these fish. And I was just, I was so proud to see it. I was grateful to have him on the boat. And even though it was a tough day, we still got it done and couldn't ask for anything else. So that being said, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you guys wanna book a trip, head over to flowbass.com right there. You can also hit me up on Instagram as well as Facebook at flow.bass and I'll be happy to chat you up, answer any questions you have and you know, work out something so we can get you on the water and catching some of these crazy fish we have here in Southeast Florida. So with that being said, thanks for watching. My name's Eric. I'll see you in that next video. Peace out.